Okay, back talking about uh, the entire ADOS situation. Um, and we're talking about Amer American descendants of chattel slavery, American descendants of slavery. Um, and uh, that's, that's our little topic. And this is going to be a little bit longer because I'm going in depth here. What does it mean? Picking a nice cup of tea. I'm using hot chocolate, man, but you know, this is like a, a chocolate chai and uh, another tea bag moringa. Put them both in there. Moringa is really good. Dr. Sabe used to talk about moringa a lot, I think. So I used to talk about moringa. Anyway, the first thing. Uh, the American descendant of child slavery, as defined by Yvette Cornell and attorney um, uh, Antonio Moore, has to do with not just, uh, it has to do with lineage. Now, lineage is, is, is clearly, is, is, I like, whatever reason why I really like uh, Yvette and, and Antonio, they're concise with their language. They've been redefined and it keeps on being defined, defined, and redefined, so we get down to really very, very, very clear. So, uh, lineage. Uh, has to do with what made you, what makes you and, and your and your lineage, your family. You know what I mean? Now, I have a personal lineage, and I, uh, the last posting I mentioned this, that I had this list. I said, you know, uh, cultural, intellectual, spiritual lineage. My personal cultural, intellectual experience, and then I list a whole bunch of a bunch of people. You know, like in here is like a, you know a, a Horace and, and Red Cloud, and these are fictional people, and but mostly it's real people. You know what I mean? Uh, Ida B. Wells, uh, Marcus Masada, Zora Neale Hurston, um, uh, Richard Wright. Uh, w. E. B. Du Bois, Saul Alinsky, uh, Rick Stout, uh, Peter Tosh, uh, I. F. Stone, uh, Miles Davis, uh, uh, Amos Wilson, uh, Ann Petrie, um, Stokely Carmichael, Carmi Toy. You know those those kind of things. Those are people. You know Nina Simone, Sophia Henson Holmes, uh, Octavia Butler, uh, Barbara Ann Teer, uh, Pete Seeger. Uh, you know then, then I have my influential teachers. Um, you know this my my my. This, Third grade teacher here, my college professor here, another college professor, Pep Pepsi Charles, Doug Evans, Avery Brooks, theater person. Anyway, those are my influences as teachers. And then you have institutions, you have things like the Patterson Project Institution, you know, uh, uh, my, my public school, PS31, uh, New York City Mission Society, Coletco, um, junior high school, my high school, a Negro Ensemble Company, um, uh, Bronx Community College, the Air Force, uh, Livingston College, uh, Pacifica Radio, which is very important in my life. Uh, um, the recent repertory of uh, Capoeira Angola Center in New York, a uh, bunch, bunch of them. They have my living influences. He's passed, but some of these people have to move over because, like, you know, like Dick Gregory's passed, you know what I mean? But he's one of the influencers, he has to go to the. Well, but these, you know, a bunch of people uh, Samuel uh, the, the Delaney, Quincy Troop, um, um, Sonia Sanchez, uh, Fred Ho passed too. Uh, ben Torbino is. Um, He's a, um, a Europe uh, uh, counterblade kind of priest in Brazil. Uh, um, uh, Chris Hedges, Max Kaiser, all these, these kinds, kinds of people like that. So I encourage everybody to have, first of all, you know, make your own lineage thing. See, you know, just the individual, whatever, and see what you come up with. It's a very interesting exercise, you know. And you'd be surprised because when you have this document, you keep it like that. And I have all kinds of things like that that's personal to me and it triggers certain things. But with this definition and with these definitions, what's really important uh, to me is that. Um, as people get on board, they're going to bring their own stuff to it. They're going to try to whistle that, da da da. But you have to follow Antonio and um, and, uh, and and Yvette, you know. Now I I I follow them the way they say it, and I listen to her, the, the you know the, I don't listen to Yvette, you know, usually um, on Mondays and, and Wednesdays. Uh, I get it Tuesday and Thursday because of the. Uh, Tuesday morning, Thursday, because of the time difference, because I'm in South Africa. Plus, I usually uh, don't listen to it live. I usually download it, but sometimes I listen to it live. Um, as I'm recording this, I just finished just listening to the second part, the um, the, the call-in part. She has the, the, the part where she's talking, and the call-in part afterwards. And call-in's quite interesting. They always have some good uh, conversation with that. Huh? Um, um, uh, so, so I do that, but I coupled it with uh, my main man. Um, which is uh, Neely Fuller Jr. I'm an acolyte of Neely Fuller Jr. And his book, you know, The United Compensatory. Um, code, style, system, you know, well, you know, this is this is his book. We just call it the code for short. Sure. You know, that's interesting because if I combine the code with a, you know, American descendant of chattel slavery, American descendant of slavery, then I get a whole dynamic to work in. It's very, very interesting. Now, you have a lot of people, like, for instance, in a Pan African uh, situation, uh, you know, all kinds of communities uh, looking at this and trying to put their little spin on it. But the thing is, a, 
ADOS exists on its own. It's in its own lane. It's being developed on its own. It doesn't need to be enhanced. It doesn't need to be attached to anything. It doesn't need any spokespeople. Nothing like that. Okay. Um, but 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 what but what happens is uh, if I use the if I follow the, the teaching of Neely Fuller Jr. and I apply it to this, I find it's much more powerful. I give. Let me give you an example. I'm not picking on anybody. This is this this is a, per a perfect example. Well, for me, it's a perfect example. Um, uh, uh, Tariq Nasheed. I love Tariq. Don't stop. Blah, blah, blah. Love his priest. Don't run. But I appreciate Tariq and I respect him. Now, he also is a, a nearly full of a junior uh, acolyte, right? And he understands ADOS. He has his own movement. Uh, uh, um, uh, was hashtag, uh, what is it? Uh, oh, gosh. I've got to look it up. I don't know if I flew right in my head. It's one of those. Uh, but anyway, anyway, we're, 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 what he does though, he follows. He's, he's very good at what he does. But he, even though he mentions Neil Fuller a lot and follows the code, what he doesn't do that the code specifically says to do, to to, to talk about other people, to call people names. You see, don't get me wrong. It's entertaining. It brings a lot of people to coon train us and stuff, and that's that's fine for him. But I couldn't do it as a acolyte of Neil Fuller Jr. I couldn't do that. You see. So that's, and the other thing is that, you know, he has his uh, VGQ, you know, where, where basically you say what you say because you are, you know, you're a descendant of chattel slavery. He say, so he, you're, you're a non-white person, so you can say what, what you say, and you have to be, and everybody has to respect that. Then you don't attack that person. Oh, he, that's what he said. You, you have to be with him, you deal with him like that. And so I'm getting us all, uh, uh, trying to explain all this stuff, only because I, I, I um, uh, so I can't say I won't say anything about Tariq what he does in terms of you know um, uh, terms of Neely Fuller Jr. and ATOS. That's what he's doing, and that, and that's fine. If if there's something with with um, ATOS, then they'll deal with it. You know, if there's something with Neely Fuller Jr., somebody will call him out on the Neely Fuller Jr. thing, and that's how it goes. And that's how everybody should be not judged, but that's that's how we should operate. We shouldn't be sniping each other. But what's more important to me in this entire movement is that I see it, it's an identifying. Um, uh, we have to identify ourselves. I had an experience. I, in fact, maybe I'll link the, um, I'll put the link to it because uh, I do these commentaries, and I did one a little while ago about um, uh, when I went to. I was in the states about three years ago, three or four years ago, whatever, and um, yeah, about four years ago, whenever it was. And what I did was, um, uh, 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 James Small, you know, Professor James Small, my main man. Um, I interviewed him because we have a relationship because he used to be on my program, No More Radio. He used to be the historian for my program, No More, no More Radio. But anyway, so I came and, and, and I interviewed him. And one of the things, no, this was longer than that. Whoa, because this was, the, this was before my last trip. So this must have been about six years ago. Uh, because, yeah, six or seven years ago. Because I came here in the Eastern Cape and when I realized everybody had to have your clan name, which is your lineage. You know what I mean? And so when I got back to the States, and when I visited the States, I said, I said, James, James, we, I, I, I want to be a part of clan. What's our clan name here in the States? And we went through this whole thing. You'll see what I even asked, um, uh, and the same, the same trip, uh, uh, Dr. Leonard Jeff Jeffries, I asked him the same thing. He came up with the thing. I changed my uh, signature box to whatever that was. Now I'm changing it again to, I think I did American DOS. Uh, I did a DOS right now, but I think I'm going to change it to American DOS again. In fact, I encourage everybody in your signature box for your emails or whatever it is, just put a, you know, American DOS, because that identifies you. Now, once you have your group, that means that to be in that group, you have to have these qualifications. Your lineage has to go through the Middle Passage, for instance. You have to end up in North America if you're going to be an American descendant of chattel slavery. You see, then you're, then you have, then that's your group. We know you're part of our group. You went, we have shared experiences, da 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 You see? So I think that's the most important thing is this, is our tag, what you call yourself. And the interesting thing, we have a black man, a black woman, a black woman and a black man who had named us, we named ourselves, you see? So when, when the hip hop is, everybody's coming up, yeah, I'm, I'm a nigga, whatever. Well, you didn't name you, that's not your name. You didn't name, you didn't put that out there. I'm a, I'm, I'm a even, a, Whatever you want to say, you know what I mean? It's important that we name ourselves. And as far as Pan-Africanism, you, you can still be a Pan-Africanist and still and and still be uh, a, a DOS. You can be uh, you can be uh, um, 
You can be a killer and be ADOS. You can be a, 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 a you can be anything. You can be, you know, you can any sexual thing you want to be. You, but you also because it, when it, at the end of the day, this is a funny thing. I'm, I'm gonna try to end it here because I've been rambling. This is a great movie called Watch Stacks. Okay, Watch Stacks. And uh, in fact, the, the director that's recently died. This one guy did a lot of TV movies, and in fact, I did, I did the, the the original version of uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory one with Gene Wilder. Anyway, he's a great he's a great director. The point is, they did this film called Watts Stacks. It was about they, they were celebrating the, the Watts uprising, and this is, the film was in 1971, 72, somewhere around there. I have the film. Um, and in the in the film, they interviewed you know they had the the, the musical ads from from the Stax record company. They had Richard Pryor uh, before he did his conversion of what, well, as he was coming out of his conversion of his time in in uh, San Francisco area or I say the the, the, the Bay Area. Um, like he, maybe he was in Richmond. Maybe maybe he was in uh, you know I don't know where it was in the Bay Area, hanging out with Quincy Troop and them those those, those cats like that. Uh, you know Ishmael Reed. If you if you look at Blazing Saddles, that's Ishmael Reed's story all the way. But we won't get into that right now. Anyway, the point is. <laughs> One of the, they also interview people in the community. I always, I even see this brother. He looked like, you know, he looked like he was on. Some, he was high. He was, he was sweating. He was, he was high. And he was saying something like, "I'm just going to paraphrase. Says, you know, sometimes I be uh, uh, Muslim. Sometimes I be Democrat. Sometimes I be." He said this and that. He said, "But I'm always black." Profound. One of the most profound lines in the movie. You know, it's an excellent movie. Get it if you can't go watch that. Okay, so that's what I look at. You know, wow. you can be whatever you want to be, but but you know, if, if you if you're being prosecuted because you're I don't know, say you're 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 you're, you're homosexual, you're prosecuted because it's, well, you you might be prosecuted for that, but if you're black, the overall reason, the overall arching thing that 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 makes you persecuted is your blackness. So you can also be persecuted as a woman, as a that, 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 that. In fact, it's only black people and women that you can see, uh, you can see the, you know, the uniform. Our, as Neely Fuller would say, this is our prison uniform, our blackness, you know what I mean? Women have a whole other issue. Just imagine if you're a black and woman, you got, you, you got, your uniform is like, whoa, you really, you know? So that's, so I need to get all that out there just so you understand that this movement is kind of really uh, is taking off. I'm very interested in it. It makes me feel, it's the same feeling I had, um, and I brought this up before and I'll leave it. I just check the, this is part two of a thing that I did, this whole thing I'm talking with uh, ADOS. So check out part one and you can see I'm trying to make it uh, shorter, but this is longer because this is a very important movement. And I think the people involved and as people understand it more, because remember, this movement is read it, uh, uh, rooted in the economics of suffering that black people had, the whole lineage that we went through, and it's all rooted in politics, okay? People are not going to get away with it. They've been getting away with it for so long, no more. And you can feel, it's like, it's like this mass movement, it's like critical mass is coming on. It's like the... If you can feel, it's, 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 it's amazing. Just like I'm saying, this whole lineage thing, I wrote this lineage in like, I don't, this was in 2000, whatever, and at the same time, Yvette and, and, and Antonio were working on the whole, the whole lineage shot right there. Now, when I wanted to, to, to my, you see, all this is in the ether, but now something that brings it all together. So a lot of people have been thinking of this stuff for years and years and years. They can now come together Hi. under this banner. So that's it. Uh, Sorry to be so long. It's a little message from me, T, from the Palace of Technic Tracks, Tibet, letting you know when I only suspect. <laughs>